Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. I'm here at Maker Faire 2015, and we ran into the R2D2 builders. This is Chris James, member of the Bay Area R2 Builders Club. Now, today we want to learn about the anatomy of an astromech. A lot of people see R2s, they love them, they run up to them, and they want to know what it takes to build one. You've built your R2, this is your R2 here. How long did it take to build yours? So I like to say that it took me two years to make it look like this, but it was really a 10 year project. So it's like this, it's like owning an old car and a motorcycle where you're constantly rebuilding it and improving and adding new features. Now to build an R2, is it something that you build completely from scratch or is it based on an existing part or artifact that you're modifying? Um, everything is, is custom, you know, either, either I've made it or we've, we've had machine shops help us make them, yeah. So to, to get started, if someone you know, joins, wants to join the R2D2 Builders Club and get started, what's the best way to get started? Where do they start even? So you can either just Google R2 Builders, you'll find us, but the real website is astromech.net. So that's our main website, that's the official website, yeah. And then let's say to get started, what's the first part you want us to tackle? Um, I like to say the dome, because if you stop after the dome, at least you have a cool thing to stick on top of your car. You know, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what's the process of building a dome? It depends how you, how you want to go about it. So, so a lot of people actually want an aluminum dome, and it's very hard to do. So there's a guy in that club that helps us fabricate those. So, yeah. And really it's like a team effort, like for it's parts runs. Yeah. So someone's in charge of the dome, and then, you know someone will do a run of a certain panel or, or part yeah, or so, chassis. So I, I may need feet, so I you know I know I need to get feet made. So I'll either I would make them or I'd find a couple of people that need to get them made and then we would kind of club together to, to convince a machine shop or, or someone in the club to make them, yeah. And so you have dome, there's the chassis, there's the feet, and how about the drive system? Do all the astromechs in the club mostly run a similar system? It's a variation on a the theme. They're, they're DC motors. Mine are, um, most of them here, I think, are probably um, some sort of variation of a um, either a scooter motor or a wheelchair motor, you know, some sort of, yeah, repurposed motor. And how much power do you need to that and, and to get um, it moving? It varies on weight. So some things here, some of the droids here are actually made of aluminum, very heavy. Mine's about 250 pounds. Um, others are made of plastic and wood and much, much lighter can actually get away with a much smaller motor. The big thing is batteries. So it's actually how long things will last. So the bigger they are, the heavier they are, the more battery power you need. So the motor, motors are kind of it's much simpler than the electronics. Yeah. And then what other electronics are inside? It, it varies a lot. So mine is pretty much tricked out. It has a lot of custom electronics in it, but you could get away with just a, a regular RC type ra you know, the radio that you would fly a plane or, or a little model car around. It all depends on how, how much you want it to actuate. For example, if you want the periscope to come up, if you yeah. want to have panels flip open. The way you're controlling this is, is custom built. It's 3D yeah, printed. So these are some little magical things I've made. Um, um, I guess developed over the last couple of years, and they've these very small controllers. Um, so my my goal is to make um, R2 very you know be, be magical as if he's real. So running around with these big RC controllers just doesn't have you know just, just spoils the illusion. So I've developed these little things, and they little pocket remotes that I can hide in my jacket or in my pocket, or just even to hold like this. And um, and so one of the things that also you, you run, because more things you add, you run out of cha there's this whole concept of channels on RC radios. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of irrelevant with R2 because it does so many things, you know. So I can I have this little like a scripting language and gesture system based on this, as well as buttons to be able to trigger things. So if I wanted to open up its pipe balance, I would just click and then just flick the joystick, and all the panels would open up. Um, rather than and then I could I have buttons, some buttons allocated for very specific things that I use very often. You know. So what's the radio system on this? So it's so it's um, it's based on XP. The radio is XP. So there's either 900 megahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. But then there's a whole back end you know system sitting on top of that. Yeah. You know, some logic in there, and then computers yeah, in there. There's logic in, on both sides. Yeah. So it's a, a totally custom system that I've developed. Um, that's been used in many autos now, uh, you know, throughout the world, in fact, and, and other other robots, Daleks and canines, and you know, there's even a biped running around, running on them right now. Awesome. Yeah. These are in many ways more advanced than the real r 2 because we try and get as much as we can into one single one. In the movies, they made dozens of these things, and each one would be custom to, for, for a very specific scene. And they only had to work once, but we want a repeatable that's not going to fail. So things fail all the time on our we have to fix them, so we actually design them to be repairable. Yeah. It sounds like, as a designer, you have to make some trade-offs in terms of weight, construction materials, details. Yeah. Now, if someone wanted to go with something really light, really basic, they don't have access to a lot of machine shops or tools, can they make one out of wood? Yeah, so the, um, I, I can't see one here right now, but there's um, people in the club that make them out of styrene. So styrene is very similar to the material you would make little model planes out of when you were a kid. So you can get sheets of styrene, you can actually lay out the plans on those and cut them out with an exact knife and a Dremel-type tools. And you can basically you know, cut one out in 
in, in like the, the neck down in a weekend or two. It'll take a long time to clear it up after, but it, you know, you can actually start building out a starting for, for very little money. Um, and once they paint it up, you know, you don't really tell a difference, you know, once it, you start adding the, you know, the painting and the weathering on them. Yeah. And the plans for that are all on the website. Yes, yeah, all the, all the plans are through the club, yeah. And then that's what you were recommending. If someone has, doesn't have a lot of experience or wants to get, get through their first R2, start with styrene, start with wood? Um, it depends on, on your budget and stuff and what you want. I guess my, my main advice is just don't jump in and start buying stuff or trying to, to build stuff. Just research and research and reading. It's just understanding what, your, understanding what your current skill level is, where you want to get to, because you're going to learn a lot of stuff by going through this. You know, people come from all over you know, to do this. Um, they, you know, we have, like locally, we have a, you know, um, you know, a philosopher, an opera singer, a dentist. Most people in the club are not technical, they're not engineers. They just have a love of wanting to build an R2-D2. So you will learn a lot of stuff along the way. There'll be people in the club willing to help you with this stuff. You know, so it's, it really does depend where you want. You just don't jump straight in. You just actually do your research. Awesome, and you guys have been building R2s for Astro Max for decades now. Now, the new movie's coming out this year. Are you guys thinking about BB-8 and how you guys would want to build one and actually get it working? So there's people in the club right now, and there's people outside of the club, you know, that are busily working on this. Um, and it's, it's a n new set of challenges. Um, yeah, so there are definitely people doing it. And then I'm sure by the time the movie comes out, you'll see them rolling. There are people that have static versions of that now. They, when the first trailer hit, within a week, there were ones out there, static ones. But there are people actively, you know, designing um, ways to do it, yeah. Getting that motorized system, that spinning motion. Yeah. How would you do it? How would you get the, the head to move independently um, of the body? Um, so it, it would be it, some sort of RC car or an adaptation of some sort of car inside with a stick and, like some, and a gimbal on top. Because they, they, when we saw that, that draw draw out on the stage, I think you probably saw it, yeah. you know, it was very different to the, the, the initial trailer. And the, the head can actually continue to roll down the ball, right? Wow. So you need some sort of gimbal system. So it's not a fixed, Kind of po point on the, on the ball. It can it, it can move around on the ball independently. So it's you know, it, yeah. It's, it's gonna be a lot of design. And yeah, the, the jury's still out. There's there's more than one way to do it, I guess. There's well, we'll be following you guys on Astromech. Uh, we'll be waiting for the movie to come out and hopefully see some BB-8s out there for. But for R2D2, people can find plenty of resources right now. Thanks so much, Chris, yeah, for sharing us with us yeah, your R2D2s. Yeah, and great to see you guys at Maker Faire again, and we'll see you guys on Tested. I'm Norm, I'll see you next time. Bye.